Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to week seven. That's right, this is week seven of the What Show Why series. And today's guest is none other than the youth pastor or the youth and young adult pastor of Mount Zion Greensboro, Pastor Javon Johnson. And man, today's episode is really going to be a blessing. Sorry, I just kicked the camera and I didn't mean to, but <laughs> I'm in this confined space. But today's episode, man, is so good. Man, this young man of God, man, he is an awesome man of God. I love what he is doing um, at Mount Zion in Greensboro. I love that ministry. That ministry is just so powerful and, 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 um, and awesome in all the ways. I was going to say another word, but it just didn't come out right, and it was going to mess everything up. So, <laughs> so I thank God for, um, for just giving me this opportunity to talk with so many pastors, so many dope individuals. As you see, man, Pastor Javon Johnson is none of this, none, um, none of the less, sorry. You see these words get me all tongue tied and messed up. Nonetheless, he's one of the most dope and authentic people that you're gonna hear um, this week. Every single week, every pastor has been real authentic. Everybody has been great. Um, and I thank God for that. And I, and I believe that Pastor Javon Johnson, he's, he's going to, you know, continue to give some nuggets. This is going to help a lot of people. Um, our conversation is really going to help a lot of people. You know, we, we had some, we had a great time just talking. Uh, we talked for um, almost an hour, but you know, I thank God that, you know, a, a friendship, a connection, uh, was made between me and this awesome man of God. Um, ironically enough, we both are from Durham. I didn't know this. He went to Southern. I went to Southern Durham High School. Only went for a year. He graduated from there. Um, and we, you know, we roll in the same circles. And it's so funny because, you know, you don't even know um, half the people that you that you know. <laughs> and it's so weird because, I, I mean, as we talk and as we got to know each other, we was like, man, you know, we, we know a lot of the same people. But, you know, Durham is nothing but a big, small community. If you're from Durham, you know they're going to watch from Durham. More nine times out of ten, you're going to find somebody that's from Durham that knows you, or know somebody that knows you, and then you're all connected. It's such a big circle. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this conversation. Um, I'm going to stop talking because this is a dope conversation. I don't want you guys to miss it, and I don't want to ruin it for nobody. <laughs> so, without further ado, um, enjoy the conversation between me and my bro Javon Johnson. Oh, this, 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 this year is shot. I'm telling you, this next year is shot. <laughs> right? Ain't no, ain't no point. So, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm working through just. Um, I have a major program coming up uh, at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And then, so I've been doing most of that stuff, man. And I got to, I just realized how junky my office was. <laughs> um, so I got to like reorganize my office. My plant died since I've been gone. Um, so yeah, man, I'm a, you know, I, I'm just going to take advantage of this, this office time until actually, um, you know, well, you already know, North Carolina got a, another two or three weeks on this. Yeah phase whatever we in um because numbers keep climbing so before you know we'll be back in phase one stay at home right and i'll be back at home <laughs> <laughs> I so i'm gonna do what i can now yeah and then, do what you uh, can until, until they listen, come back because you never back know. to the house listen i ain't, I ain't concerned i ain't worried about it, man but i'm, I'm glad man I'm, I'm happy to do this with you brother uh whatever you need from me man just let me know yeah definitely man i appreciate you taking the time i know you definitely Got a lot going on, and, um, especially with ministry and with your, with your personal life and with your business and everything. So I just appreciate you taking the time. Right. Uh, you know, uh, my bro, well, our mutual brother, um, mm -hmm. Rob Butler, connected us. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we, we chatted up on um, on Facebook statuses all the time. We're going back and forth. Yeah. So yeah. You, you already know, and I know that yeah. it's going to be a good one, uh, a good interview. So uh are y'all back in the church Definitely. as far as like okay. everyone back in the church or is it just you no man so so on, it's uh, so it's just it's just us as far as staff um we we're not we're not going to in person um no time soon mm -hmm. um so on sunday mornings um my bishop and the praise team and the media department x y and z they come together and actually do a live recording so we don't do anything pre-recorded anymore we did that maybe for the first like two or three weeks yeah he came in prior to everything really getting really tough before we all went home and get like seven different recordings mm -hmm. but he never used all of them so he still got like five oh wow. um, <laughs> that's 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 <laughs> left um but but he's been doing live man he's been coming in actually coming to church every sunday um and doing so we do worship management so um 
pastoral staff gets up and do all any any um, exaltations. Um, he gets up to get the word, praise and worship goes forth, and they out and we out, man. So um, we probably won't do any in person. I'm actually over. I got to sign the um, task force to the first to come at the church. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually building this task force now of like um, health professionals and people in the school system and those in our community and those here at our church to kind of figure out how it could look once we get the final say so to go back um mm-hmm. so bishop will kind of give us and say hey he says hey guys we want to go back to church in december um so so myself and the task force kind of work on you know recommendations as it relates to how do we go back and how do we serve this capacity so me being a little children youth ministry i probably won't even open back up the children youth ministry until next year yeah um officially so since then i've kind of been doing my virtual thing so we have a virtual bible study thing we do we have a virtual um I read to the kids every Wednesday. Um, um, I have some like five minute, eight minute messages that go out to my youth, uh, which mm-hmm. are middle school and high school that go out every once a week. So it's July. So July is our rest month. So I haven't done anything like that um, this month for them. I got a major program. So every year, every summer we do this thing called Summer Drip. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, it's really like hands on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that time type things. Friday's normally like a color war, a water balloon fight, like 200 kids, 300 kids from the city come together and we just kind of go crazy, eat food, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, but this year we're going all virtual. So Wednesday we have a craft session with our younger kids. Um, Thursday we have a family session about how to raise your kids during the pandemic. Uh, Friday is our uh, pull-up. So they're actually going to bring people on campus. So you're invited to come to campus and have like ICs and hot dogs and right, DJ so. outside, some giveaways. We just literally pull up. You pull up, drive around, get your stuff, go hang out in the parking spot, eat your food, listen to music, and you leave. Oh, that's um, cool. And then Saturday we're doing, um, it's called Drip Session. So my wife and I have been doing this for the last two two or three years. Uh, well, we've kind of really been like intentional about like summits so or like mentoring groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the first year she called the salon man and and first of all girls always come out more than guys so girls so it was like he had like 120 girls that came to the session and uh she had like so she called the salon but every table was like a different hairstyle yeah uh so like at, at, at like the weave table it was more about you know how, how to piece together um, parts of your life and how those different pieces of your life come together and form one design of come you know x y and z uh so this year she's doing a session called you cute girl Mm. And um, it's about about um, um, affirming um, and declaring things of your life as far as the promises of God. She's going to bring in this author, um, mm-hmm. who's one of our great friends um, and sisters, Kier McDowell. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's just authored this book about 21 Day Devotional for Young Girls. And they're going to kind of just do like this live Zoom conversation about affirming and declarations of your life. And every mm-hmm. young lady's going to walk away from a, with a book. All that kind of good stuff like that, man. So that's like my major program of the summer. Um, and then after that, you know, we're going to just kind of throw it up in the air and see what happens. So I'll probably do some more recording next month Yeah. as far as like my little eight minute, five minute sermons go out every Monday mm-hmm. and I'll just do my, you know, my check-ins and stuff like that, man. But we ain't going back to church no time soon. We just, <laughs> you know, bitch is going to do his thing on Sundays and we're going to kind of hold down. So, so more in this season has been more about pastoral care than anything yeah. else. Just really making yeah. sure my kids are taken care of. Uh, I got, I got, uh, I'm over both children and youth ministry so mm-hmm. i have about 300 children and youth all together wow and i have a team of, of 15 young adults who serve as like my youth mentors my youth leaders and i have about 60 30 I have 30 teachers who are who normally do like children's church and i have like five leaders over them mm-hmm. so um and i have like a ymac council like so almost like my board of elders as it relates to children and youth ministry um, in yeah. a sense and um my major push pastorally has been God just really using this season to talk about pastoral care, like because you can't be with them physically, how do you still take care of them? Right. Um, so I just been a lot of check ins, a lot of text messages, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, just a lot of like how you doing, a lot of just reminders, a lot of just, hey, you you know, God still has you in your mind. Don't worry about, you know, just really like how you feeling, you know, mentally and emotionally. So I'm actually holding a drip session with my boys um on that Saturday. My wife is doing her session and we're calling it young man, keep your head up. And it's about mental and emotional care. Yeah. Um, so for young boys, man, who just, first of all, you don't know how to express yourself anyway. Um, just kind of really taking this time to talk about how to properly express yourself and how to properly deal with your emotions and your feelings. You can still be saved, but yet at the same time, you, you, can, you have the right to be angry and you have right. the right to still be masculine. But how do you express these different things and these different caveats? So, yeah, man, we just still moving forward with ministry um, despite the pandemic. Yeah. You know, that's all we can do. 
So yeah. we can't do okay. brother. No, I love it, man. Cause it's like, like you said, you know, it's an interesting season that we're in and we have to figure out how to maneuver in this season, how to do things differently, how you can pass through your, your, um, your, your flock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, man. Yeah. And honestly, I, I love everything that you just said that you're doing. You and your wife, I mean, you guys sound like y'all a power, powerful couple, power couple doing things <laughs> in ministry. No, That's man. dope. Because, like, you know, it's, it's especially in young ministry, it's, it's, po- it's, it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, I don't say rare, but it's very good to have, you know, your wife as a support system in ministry and doing everything that you can. Yeah, man. You know, um, I'm a big supporter and everything that I'm doing in ministry and I love it, you know. She, I, I think, me out a lot. I, listen, I think one of the major things, man, is 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 that we build a foundation of friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing this for three months and some, and some well, three years and some change. I've been in full time ministry for three months and some change, but I've been mm-hmm. since I've been at Zion, I've been always in ministry. So at seventeen, I was licensed to preach the gospel. Um, but I necessarily didn't necessarily answer or walk in the call until about 23. Mm. So I'm 29 now. I'll be 30 this year. And um, so actually me and Rod went to high school together. So we know each other like 11, like 11 years, 12 years. Oh, you um, went to Southern? So, yeah. Yeah. Went to yeah Southern, I went to Southern, Southern for like a year. Really? Yeah. What I went year? Um, 05. Uh, yeah, 05, 06. Okay. So were you a freshman then? I was a, a sophomore. Okay. So I went, I came into Southern in 05. Came into something oh five oh six yeah so yeah 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 so I graduated in oh nine okay so I graduated in oh nine um so yeah so Rod and I met at Southern X Y and Z so that's that so when Rod was talking about like you know I would be a pastor I'm like I don't know what a pastor man I'm trying to you know so right. so it's funny so it's funny that like now I'm sitting here you know a whole full time pastor um but my wife and I man we met each other in college and so we we built our relationship based off of just pure friendship so we married now for four years. And um, we didn't sign up. Neither one of us signed up for full time ministry. Uh-huh. Um, so when we so when, like now, I talk about ministry itself. And my, how my wife, my wife's passion is young women. So uh, I've never been trying to like you know make her or force her into places because I'm doing this. You should do it because it looks good. Yeah. Uh, I always want her to kind of you know operate in her area of gifting and purpose. I think you know the overall conversation that we're going to end up having is about purpose. Yeah. So I want to make sure that she's working and operating in her purpose so that she never feels like burnout or never feels a like drain or never feels as if she's working uh you know uh aside the grain of what I'm doing. So yeah so this conversation that and that's why it's called you cute girl because that's her that's her language. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to call it like young women's empowerment something. That ain't, that ain't her <laughs> right ain't her language. You know what I mean? That ain't how they that's that's not her her natural gifting or character. So we wanted to call it what her language was and how she's able to relate to young women. Mm-hmm. And uh, I commend couples, man, um, who are able to do this for years. Like you were saying yeah. with your wife, you know, I mean, like, 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 like we do, like we do this naturally. I think it, I think it works best when it's organic yeah. and not necessarily like, like forced and like you trying to make something happen because it looks good to people. Um, um, I think that's why my wife has been so successful with her relationship with young girls because my wife is real. Like, yeah, she'll tell you, like, girl, like, why, stop doing that. Like, you stupid. Like, she'll tell you, and I'm like, my wife, she's 12 years old, I can't tell she's stupid, right? But, but, but they love, like, but they receive her so much more because of those things. Like, I got a girl in my youth ministry, and she just graduated, so I guess she's now in young adult ministry. Mm-hmm. I call her um, Mean Girl. Because every time you look at her, she just looks mean. Like, right. It's like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> but but my wife has been like, what? It took it took one outing that I actually invited. I, we did paintball last year, mm-hmm. and a oh, year before last, and I wanted. I, so I invited the girls. I supposed to be like a guy thing. I was like, I invite some girls because girls. I was like, how do we want to go some places too? So my wife came, and some other you know, some of my young um, young adult uh, women came, and they took her out. Uh, so we ended paintball at one. They were going with her for the rest of the day to like seven o'clock. Mm. And on that day, they were able to get a breakthrough mm-hmm. and they were able to get to her and talk to her. And since then, that next Sunday, I mean, she came to that altar and she was a ball of emotions because of the seed they were able to plant just wow. from one organic day. But that's because when people work in their purpose or operate from passion and purpose, mm-hmm. man, you see more you see more harvest of fruits. You're right. But when you try to work into something that you necessarily ain't, ain't used to, like I used to work in landscaping, right? I used to work in, um, and I used to work in lawn care for my dad for years, like until I got college. Mm-hmm. 
And one thing I knew about yards is that you have to approach every yard differently. Right. So you can't approach every yard with the same regimen that you give the, the, the yard that has years of grooming and years of fertilizing, years of great soil as you do the new yard that you have taken on because that new yard may have pine trees around it. The pine trees around the pine trees cause acidity that causes the grass to burn out. It may have moss in the yard depending on what area the city is on. Might, might it, have, it has a lot of running water that comes through. It might have some drainage issues. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure you approach every single thing differently. But, but when you are passionate about what you do, then you know that. But if you're not passionate about it, you're gonna operate from things that necessarily don't make sense. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where this nest where this little runoff came from, but ultimately, <laughs> um, um, I think it's just about man finding out what your niche is, then that niche turns into a purpose. And before you know it, man, um, you know, passion fuels purpose. Yeah. You're not passionate about a thing, you never you're never gonna fully see the benefits or reap the harvest of it if you're not passionate about it. I do what I do today. Um, not because I just, you know, I don't want to work with kids. No, I do. I do. They man, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about their futures, mm -hmm. right? Not just about ministering to them, but about their future. Mm -hmm. And then for me being passionate about the future, I found my assignments. You know, I can go on for days about assignments and seasons, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily know this is what we're here for today. I'll talk about that later <laughs> on my interview part. Right. Um, but I'm just really passionate about young people and their future and their destinies and what God's called them to. And because of that, I have particular assignments in my life mm -hmm. to fulfill that. Mm -hmm. um, and not to say I'm not necessarily passionate about, what I realized about, about my ministry, man, is that I'm a I'm an old school, young preacher, teacher, pastor yeah. leader. God, I grew up in an old church. I grew right. up in a Baptist church in Durham. So I grew up, my, my first bishop was, I, I, when I got licensed, he was like, 75 years old then wow. um and and all the elders were old so i was the only young minister in my church and that's what me and ryan has always had a conversation about like i was the only young minister in my church like i saw a youth revival with my peers right. <laughs> like, like <laughs> i'm the only person in the church that's like like just my age so right. um but now i've learned to use my to use my age and my wisdom mm. from from elders around me to kind of so i was preaching to people who are like my parents and older yeah you know what i mean i first got to start preaching so now i've had to switch how i preach my style of preaching my 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 pedagogy of how i approach preaching in order to really reach them um but that's all about purpose too man i found yeah. what my purpose is i'm not i'm not necessarily a hooper yeah. you know what i mean like i ain't a hooper like yeah. i'm not necessarily just all a teacher but i have i found this sweet spot that works for me and and I organically, strategically, intentionally about how I how I present the gospel is 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 I work in my purpose. So I, I you know I it's easy for us man as young people to see the young adults to see brothers and sisters man who do their thing like dang man I look good like I want to do what they doing yeah. but that ain't your thing it ain't <laughs> like, like that ain't that ain't what that ain't your thing yeah. so so now when I get up and preach on fifth Sundays to a th thousand plus people you know like two thousand plus people I didn't start there. Like mm -hmm. I didn't start, I was, I was preaching at my Free Will Baptist Church, mm -hmm. my, at Bellion Free Baptist Church across the street from Cornwallis at 17 years old to, to 40 plus people, um, 107 people. You know, I was preaching to them. So now I think God's graced me to be able to preach to a magnitude, a multitude of ages, generations of people, demographics of people, people at different places in their lives, because I've been, I've been genuine to my purpose. Yeah. Uh, cause I'm I've seen that, that you were able to, it's like what the Bible said, you, you didn't, you know, forsake those small things that, that small beginning. Yeah, man. And I, you know, and it's so easy for us to get caught up, man. It's easy for us to get caught up, man. It's, and it's, and it's, I think I made a status, um, last week or something about, uh, it's so easy for us to get caught up in the affirmations of seeing society and seeing social media yep. and you want what people have. Um, but it ain't for you because look, yeah. look, do you know why you're chasing them? They don't, have, don't, don't think, don't have anything, I don't want anything from you. You're they right. want people, they, they want everybody. If I have 10,000 plus people and I got all this different stuff going on in my apartment, now, trust me, I know I've reached out to brothers and sisters through social media. Hey, brother, you know, let's connect. Let's really grow. And just, I haven't heard anything from them. Wow. But, but, but let someone up on their, up on their comment or let them say in their stories, I love this person. I love, them. but you see it. It's, it's an ongoing narrative of who that person is. Like, so if I got 3,000 people, I'm only connecting myself to people who have 3,000 people more in my followership. 
Mm-hmm. I'm only going to connect with people who I believe have status, yeah. right? Who I can go to their church and I can get some more status for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and we begin like, I think we just work outside of purpose, man. We just don't, we just, we just, we settle for, we settle, we, we raise ourselves to, to a place where we want to be seen as idols. Yeah. And that was never the agenda. But, but yet we'll use false humility and say, I don't want to be, I'm, I'm being humble. If you have to say you're being humble, you're not being humble. Right. I mean, that's like a lot of everybody tell, you know, I, I humble, you know, I humble myself, I'm appreciative. No. I mean, we see the ego. We see <laughs> we see how much you take it. Yeah, that sounds good, dog. <laughs> sounds good. It sounds great. That sounds good. Man, hey, stop lying. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's awesome, man. Because like honestly, everything that you're saying, it lines up with what we're talking about today. Um, uh, with yeah. the what what's your why or what's your purpose yeah. um um theme. Uh, yeah. for one faith for the series and yeah. you know it all just stems off of that you know finding your purpose finding your why finding your lane um, understanding yeah. what you know god is calling you to do understanding what's your uh, why and what's your purpose so that you can take over this world by and take it over by storm do what god has called you to do uh, understand what your purpose is that god is giving you and just yeah. operate in it because for me Man, I'm, I've been in places where I've, you know, preached in front of many and I've been in places where I preached in front of little. And for yeah. me, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what what's the next step as far as what ministry. But, you know, one yeah. of the things that I'm yeah. appreciative of is like whenever God gives me um, a platform or whenever God gives me an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, you take advantage of it and you find your purpose in that. And you just, you know, you be faithful over the few that God has given you and yes. he'll eventually make yes. it over many. And that's yes. what I'm just, that's where I'm at right now, because we moved down to Charlotte about a year ago. Um, okay. and God has really, you know, blessed me to be able to grow yeah. uh, spiritually um, yeah. and grow in my ministry. Um, and to be honest, that was one of the main things that, you know, God told me when I was coming down here. He yeah. said, hey, I'm sending you to Charlotte. You're going to grow. Um, now, <laughs> this, is a, this is probably a sermon that I'm going to come up with later, but, you know, with growing, there are pains that you have that you go through. You know, you're, you're trying to basically have to get rid of what you've been accustomed to all these years yeah. and become who God has called you to be. Now, yeah. it's not saying you have to forsake your foundation, but, yeah. you know, you understand your foundation, you understand where you came from, and you, you use that or you utilize your foundation exactly what it is as your foundation and you continue to build off of it and i think that's that's kind of the season where i'm in right now is just building off of that foundation that i've had over these last few years god has really blessed me to uh, come out of a great church to uh, come under great leadership uh to understand you know exactly what it takes to uh to preach the gospel Mm -hmm. to preach god's truth um Mm -hmm. to do everything right um as far as preaching the god the gospel and 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 treating people right I think that, you know, that is more important this day and age. It's just, you know, loving people, treating people, preaching the truth, okay. standing firm on it. Um, and then going from there to where, where I'm at right now, Breakthrough Ministry Church of Christ, you know, a very small church. We, we have maybe Listen. 30, 40 members soaking wet. But you know Listen. what? I love every single one of those members. I love my pastor, who is my uncle. I love yeah. his heart that he has for those people. Um, and I love his heart for pa- uh, for pastoring and for ministry. And I, I think that for God to take me from where I was uh, back at home to where I'm at now, you know, it's been an eye opening experience, but it's really shown me, you know, what it really means to be a pastor. Yeah. You know, so many people want yeah. the title of being a pastor. They want so much of, of the accolades that come with it. They want the fame, yes, the notoriety. None yes, of that sir. matters at the end of the day. What matters at the end of the day is how you pastor your people, the relationship yeah. that you have with your people. And you know, yeah. You're youth pastor. Yeah, you know what it takes to um to 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 communicate with the youth. Yeah. Uh, what you have to do to get through to your youth. Um, it's different. Well, I only I won't even say it's different. It's similar on a, on a, on a larger scale when you're dealing with grown folks, because grown folks act like kids sometimes too. So it's <laughs> so it's like you have you learn how to navigate and you learn different things. I, one of the things I learned in youth ministry is the same thing. You know, you you treat people the same way. You learn how to adapt, especially in preaching. You learn how to adapt. And preaching when you're preaching to different people because people yes. di- people receive words yes. differently yes. and what you're that's trying to hold the situation itself man yeah uh-huh it's a whole yes. <laughs> you, can, you can try to explain something one way and they'll interpret yes. it another way and you're like that's mm-hmm. not what i'm trying to interpret that is not <laughs> what god told me to tell you <laughs> so, so man I, I already know this this is gonna be good listen 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 i think i think with that comes um 
this definition like 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 what is success yeah right because you know as i grow so i'm older now so um i realized i woke i woke up every i woke up every day now in quarantine thinking man, i'm about to be 30 years old when at one point i was 16 mm-hmm. right and 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 now i have a family i have a wife i have a, I have a son i have a mortgage i have a career and um and with that it's always this ever evolving you know, notion of what is success. Mm-hmm. And I think that society has has created its own definition of what success is and what is deemed to be. Uh, but I think success is truly subjective yeah. to the individual and to the individual's um, uh, main purpose. Because to me, success is necessary, isn't necessarily money. Mm-hmm. Or is it necessarily like a nice house? Like, like, like with success comes those things. Mm-hmm. But I, but I was gonna actually getting ready to make that status today. Is that to me? I think I'm more inclined to study the person's character than I am to figure out how successful they are, how they became successful. Mm-hmm. So while my peers are like posting like these quotes from Jay Z and trying to figure out how like stock market works and X Y and Z and people who've been successful and like building business is cool but like what did what kind of character did it take for you to sustain this yeah and i think for me i i ultimately you know i just finished listening to to, to a phenomenal preacher dr brown mm-hmm. um and i've been studying people's characters man this season i've been trying to figure out like how have you been been able to stay consistent in who you mm. are to maintain where you've been that's good. And for me, that's that's more important for me. Like I, my focus is how to be a strong leader. Like literally, when 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 God created this moment, God thinks this is a God ordained moment in, in the pandemic. It's a God ordained moment in the pandemic of Sila. Like God told me to focus on being a pastor, and then I said being a pastor in a sense of like just focus on like just your ministry but like what's your ministries yeah. and that's my family and that's the people around me and that's the children that i've and children and youth i've been called to so i so i've been more inclined to understand and study how to be a great leader than i have been how to be a great pastor i mean how to be a great preacher yeah like like like, like i'm yeah i'm less concerned about how to make more money yeah like, 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 like i'm less concerned about how to have more fame mm-hmm. and how to create a stronger brand i'm more concerned about how to become a stronger person mm-hmm. and a stronger leader a stronger a stronger pastoral presence to my wife to my son and to those around me um so that's why now my navigation on how i approach ministry has now been scaled down to, to, the, to the mere nuts and bolts of how do i take care of people Mm. And I think if we study people's character more, we study people's successes, then we'll understand how to, how to maintain success that God has for us. Yeah. And that's why I, throughout my life, throughout college and throughout even now, I've been more focused on seasons and assignments. Mm-hmm. Because the seasons can change, and every season there are several different assignments. Yep. But if you're un, but if you're unaware of what there's what that season is, like like embrace the season that you're in. Don't be so so worried about how to get to the next one. Like, I, but God showed me this. Yes, he did show you that. Mm-hmm. But embrace the season that you're in because with that season comes assignments. I told some youth some weeks ago at VBS, we actually did VBS virtually, and I told them, I said, I want you all, because we, we did the whole week on just leadership. I talked for three days on to our youth on leadership. And I wanted them to get down in their spirit about um, assignments um, and seasons. And I, I did this way. So I did an analogy of this. Imagine that that you're sitting in your classroom, and that classroom is your assign is your season. Mm-hmm. And every day you have, and every day you have to approach your season. And in order for you to leave that season, in order for you to turn the knob on that door to leave that classroom, you have to fulfill those assignments on the board. Yep. So in, in, until you leave, you can't leave that classroom until you fulfill that agenda, those objectives that that are on that board for that day, and then you can exit that season. Mm. See, 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 we've been so inclined to like, how do I get to the next class? How do I get to the next class? Mm-hmm. But we don't, we don't want to say take the time to actually fulfill the lessons that God is giving us in that season. That's good. And so I'm more inclined, man, now, you know, and I, I, this is my prayer for all my peers, man, who are, who are like us, who are, who are at age, who have these other burdens on our shoulders, is that, is that we slow down to embrace the season. I love that. That, that we slow down to embrace building our character because god is really calling us to 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 embrace the season of character building yeah because 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 imagine when we get out of this thing man when we get out of this thing 
man. Like, 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 yeah, I think that God's calling us to build, to build, to build businesses and to truly really take on different ownership and do new things. But, but what kind of person would you be after this? That's good. Like, no, like what kind of, per, what kind of, what kind of, mind, what kind of mindset, what kind of heart will you have after this? Mm-hmm. Like, like, like when all things clear up, I want my wife to say my husband held it down. Right. Oh, oh my, oh, my son to oh. smile at me and hold me and just be like so happy to see. I'm not concerned, man, about like, man, Jay, Jay out here, man, he got a thousand businesses popping off. Like he done wrote 10 books. Like, like, yeah, like, man, like I've wrote, I like, I've, I've co-written a devotional with, with my brothers, Ken McDowell. I've done that. Cool. You know what I mean? I, I've been able to do some programming here at church. Cool. I've done that. But I want to make sure that in the day, God's pleased with, with who I am at right. the end of this. Right. And that those who I minister to and I, and I pastor can say that at the end of the day, I never, I never raised myself above the platform mm. and i never settled for the platform mm. i think we've been chasing we, we we chase accolades we chase people to say man look what you're doing i'm yeah. not chasing that no <laughs> like i want i want those around me who i lead to be pleased with the, the direction that i'm helping them get to it's not about my, they say about my vision my my passion but i want to make sure that as you serve my vision as i serve god's vision as you serve along with me i'm also helping you propel to what god's calling you to man, uh, so man so right there you yeah you got to say that again you got to repeat that listen, you listen, repeat so, that. <laughs> so as i'm serving god's vision and as i'm serving what god wants me to do and as you're helping me serve god's vision then i'm also as a leader helping push and propel you towards what god's calling you to do okay. and i think that's what that's the main thing key in leadership my pastor says all the time that that you're not leading anyone if no one's following you mm. and mm. i think i think i think a lot of us has have given us ourselves a title of leadership but yeah. no one's following you and yeah. you're not and i want to add to that not only is anyone not following you but what are you leading them to right like like, like shepherds for instance always had a destination in in, in mind for their sheep yep so as a leader, we, you know, we have to be mindful of before I get up in the morning, what's my intended goal? Don't be a wanderer. Mm. That, that's, no leader should be a wanderer. People die for the lack of knowledge. So that means you should, have, you should always have a vision with you. If you're, not, if you're in a season where you can't cast vision, that, that means you're in a season where you can't be a good leader right now. You're right. So, well, so, 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 so again, again, character should say, you know, you know what, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me remove myself from this role. Mm-hmm. But what I've seen that, uh, what I've seen is that, that pride creates platforms. Oh man. Boy, and, boy, we, know, we and, just did a whole series on <laughs> my cousin, uh, Omar, uh, Elder Omar Pick. We just did a whole series on the sin of pride. And I'm Listen. pretty sure we ruffled some feathers. My cart may be revoked in the church of God in Christ afterwards. But, <laughs> but man, you speaking the truth. You are speaking the truth, man. It's like Listen. so many times we 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 want that platform, we want the accolades, we want the status, and that pride that comes with it. It can overtake us in, in many ways that you know we are subjected to it, and we are un- insubjected to it. Like we don't even see it, and like we just we're so gung ho for it that we don't yeah. even look at what we're doing the damage that we're doing in the process and that damage that we're doing in the process is tearing other people down because we have a vision for what we want to see for ourselves Mm -hmm. but we're not doing anything to help anyone else with their vision to to come along as you said earlier that's it that's why i said that you have to repeat that because (laughs) what people need what people need to understand uh and and especially pastors when you are a visionary and you are a pastor and a leader yes you want people to be um under you and serve your vision but it's also important that you understand the vision of your uh, of the people that you're pastoring. You understand the vision of the people that are under you. Yeah. Because I've we learned in the academy a while back that leadership beget leaders beget leaders. Meaning that if yes. I'm a leader and I have a vision, like you said earlier, I'm going to make sure that as you serve in my vision, that I'm serving your vision. Mm-hmm. It's like servant leadership. Yeah. That's in the Bible. Yeah. You know, we are yeah. serving each other, but the, the 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 leader who is the highest leader should be serving his subordinates in that same manner that Jesus served the disciples. That's it. <laughs> and and I think that's what people miss. I think when people think about leadership, they think about, no, it's what you do for me. But but think about what as I grow as I've grown older and now ministry, I, I love what Freewood Baptist Church has taught me because once a quarter we we wash feet. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
And and when I was young, I was like, why are we sitting here watching people feed? This is, this is this is weird. <laughs> um, and I watched pe- I watched feed, and you know, I saw the elders and the sa- and the mothers and the deacons and the uh, wash feet. But now I understand it. It's yep. because is that it brings you down to a place of humility. Yep. It brings you down to a place of humility spiritually and also physically. Mm-hmm. When you can get at the lowest point of an individual, and, and sprinkle their feet. And, and actually clean their feet. I mean, the feet are, first of all, are, are considered a, a nasty place to be at because they can be funky, they can be just not taken care of. So mm-hmm. for, for, for an individual to say, you know what, I love you this much that I'm willing to bring myself down mm-hmm. to wash up your feet. That is the main thing of leadership that Jesus yep. Christ taught us how to be humble. Yep. And what I think that, that, that people keep missing is that we want so many people to serve us, but we're not necessarily willing to serve people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's discipleship. That's discipleship. It, that discipleship is about how are you going to take that individual that says, you know what, I want to follow what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's at the end of the day, help them help, help serve their vision and also help groom and prepare them for what it is that God's calling them to. I and I think that. oftentimes what leaders and often and what a lot of senior pastors miss, man, is that they miss that opportunity to disciple the individuals uh, among them. Mm-hmm. Is that you know we, they get so caught up, you know, we get so or even pastors on even on my level get so caught up in just the hype around my vision, what I believe God's calling me to, is that I never take time to slow down and disciple those around me. So I, mean, I got by myself, man, you know, um, I, I got this thing called deeper coming up. Um, with some of my youth, I'm going to take about 10 youth, man. And so, and so that's how we should have necessarily be like everybody, right. like, like who is God calling you to right now in this season? Who wants to be a part of that, that walk? Yeah. Um, so I'm getting ready to do like a six week journey, man, every week with 10 youth um, on just the basic principles of our Christianity um, and just walk them through that thing for six weeks. Just, I'm, I'm just committing six weeks. And from that will spark the hunger for something else, and yeah. then we'll then we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Right. I, but I think I think we over I think we over synthesize it. I think we sound like well I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a hundred people and we are gonna take them on this course for next year. Mm-hmm. No, I'm about to do six weeks with ten youth from middle school to high school, and we're gonna just walk through, have them ask me the hard questions. Yeah. You know, help me help them understand who they are. Help you know help them understand what God how to speak to God how to yeah. talk to him. You know what how to read the Bible. You know what I mean? What is prayer? How we, how do we do this thing called prayer? How to become a great leader in my school system? You know what I mean? I think I think that's discipleship. And I think, but no one wants to do the hard work. The easy work is preaching. <laughs> that's the easy work. That's easy, dog. That's easy. Like it, t- it takes a lot out of you. That's easy. That's easy. All you gotta do is study, get your word right. You know the word for <laughs> the God. You know what I mean? Get up and get and get. Not saying the Holy Spirit's not in it, but he should. First of all, some people it's not. He's not in it, but it, it, he should be. He should definitely be in it. But the preaching part is 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 not even half the job. The preaching part is like fifteen percent of the job. Mm-hmm. The rest, you know, it, the rest of it is what you do throughout your week. And even if you're not a pastor, as a leader, you know that meeting is fifteen percent of your job. Mm-hmm. That's- Uh-oh. Talk to your people when you reach out to your people. When your people see you, there they they see the genuineness of what God calling you to, or or whatever it is that God's calling you to do in that season for their lives, man. So I think that we we got to get this thing back into perspective. Yeah. Um, perspective has been warped, brother. Um, and what it is and what it takes to lead people. And I think if we just focus more on character and focus more on what God's calling us to do as far as serving people, then from that we'll reap more fruit. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. So, man, yeah. we, we, we kind of like cover everything <laughs> <laughs> in just a conversation. <laughs> but, you know, I, I appreciate that. Man, that no problem, that, man. That dope because, like, you know, I think that a lot of people, what they need to see, I'm, I'm, we're the same age. I'm about to be 30 yeah. in September. And it's yeah. like what God, what God is showing, showcasing in this season is like, of course, younger people who are passionate for him, um, yeah. who's willing to take up the reins of the older generation. Cause we see a lot of our older generals um, passing away, you know, yeah. they're, they're moving on. And now it's like the mantle is now starting to fall on more people like us to pick up this thing, yeah. uh, carried into the new, in, into the next generation. 
and just continue to preach and teach the gospel the way that God has called us yeah. to do. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I, we're in a very unique season. And I feel like, you know, because uh, that the coronavirus here, as you said earlier, you know, yeah, we have, um, you know, our, our moments where we're trying to figure things out. But, you know, I think that God has really set this in place so that we can just sit back um, yeah. get the house, get more of his presence. Uh, I was talking to another pastor. That's one of the things that he was saying that, you know, God, you know, we're in this season where God wants more of us to be in his presence all the time. Yeah. We should be, um, we should be hungry for his presence. We should mm -hmm. want more of his presence. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that we're in this season because of that, you know, God wants us to, to desire him more. Yeah, man. You know, we can't go out and preach the gospel and teach the gospel into the nations and to like at, with the great commissions as the great yeah. commission is, uh, if we don't have the presence of God in us and if we don't have God in us, period, you know, before you even get the presence, you got to have God in you first. <laughs> and all that stuff matters like we have to be in a place where we can continue to grow uh, continue to to learn and continue to know more about who God is um, in this season uh, in the next season and be in prepare or, or be prepared for yeah. what's coming next because what's coming next yeah. man we don't know what's coming after this coronavirus but what Listen. we do know is that there's going to be a great revival there's going yeah. to be a great um a, a great uh, presence of people wanting to know more and more about God and we have to yeah. be prepared you know yeah. what we do in this season uh, we can't be lazy we can't just be sitting around doing nothing we have to put forth the work because yeah. next season as you said you know you have all these things that all these assignments that you have to get done before the next season come and I yeah. feel like for a lot of people you know figuring out what is your why figuring out what is your purpose now before that next season hits is more is way important than anything else right now because you can just go walk into that next season and not even know what your Here. purpose is and what your why is. You just serving something that you don't even know, have no idea. Right. <laughs> you just doing just it. Just doing stuff. <laughs> right. and, and we can't yeah. that. You know, I, I think that with this situation, everything that's going on, it has heightened our awareness of what's happening in the world. And it has also yeah. heightened, you know, what we need to do um, as far as for social justice reforms, um, um, to yeah. racial um, tensions what we need to do as far as taking care of our people, um, you know, the elderly, making sure that we're not exposing them, um, making yeah. sure that, you know, we're being responsibly, social responsibly, which is yeah. something that has been preached for all these years and people are still being stupid and doing their own Listen. thing. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions uh, okay. while we got a couple of minutes left. Um, Cause like we, we just hit kind of almost everything about the good, why good. and all that good stuff. So, like, what motivated you to pursue ministry? Because um, I know that's probably that's tied to your testimony as well. Yeah. So just talk about your testimony and what pursued you. To yeah, man. Um, so, uh, make a long story short as possible. Um, I grew up in Durham. <laughs> uh -huh. um, grew up in the south side of Durham. Um, I went to C.C. Spalding. I went to DSA. I uh, went to Southern for high school. And um, uh, I grew up just really being family-oriented. Into. Like my dad, my grandmother, I was really like heavy on on just making sure the family was taken care of. Um, so I so I say that because that's where my passion and my heart comes for for people. Uh, because I because because you can't necessarily be passionate about family about necessarily without without being passionate about friends and about community X Y and Z. Right. Um, because ultimately that's your family as well. So my dad, man, was just present um, in more ways than one. My dad was present. Um, and, and I think that he was, uh, quote unquote, overly present because, uh, from the age of 14 until he was 34, 35, he was a, um, a, a addict. He was on drugs and on alcohol, uh, functioning alcoholic, functioning drug addict. Um, but he had children prior to me and had some issues, was married prior to me, had some issues. Um, so when I came on the scene, um, I, I don't call myself an accident, but I call myself a surprise. Mm -hmm. And they'll say the same thing. My parents like, you were surprised. You, we know you're going to get ready to come out of here. Um, and I think that he had a second chance. I think God gave him a second chance with me. And um, and and he, he said still every time he passed away well, seven, eight years ago now. Um, um, and he said the story everyone when he was alive that, that one night in our in our two bedroom apartment uh, on Barton Street, on Feb, down Feb, right across street from Feb Street, mm -hmm. um, he said that my son called up to me one night. I had to be like two years old, and he said, "Daddy, I love you," mm. and that just broke him. Wow! And 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 he knew that he had changed his life. 
um, because one night um, while he was walking home, he broke down in the middle of the street uh, about two o'clock in the morning and he just felt the presence of God. Wow. And he went cold turkey, left my mom, left the apartment where they were at, went to, a, went to a hotel room and just went cold turkey, never went to a program, wow. just went cold turkey, returned back to the family and just began to really go hard in the community and really go hard with his story. Um, my dad just like proved what it means to kind of, to overcome mm -hmm. and what it means to have a call in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so my dad just, 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 just exuded manhood and exuded what it took to be a leader in the community uh, how he treated people man um how he ministered to people without having to say being a minister i've been necessarily being a, a pastor right uh without being licensed in x y and z because it kind of showed me man how to be a man it showed how showed me how to be a husband it showed me how to be a father um and and from that i think i think that my dad's presence was a call of my calling I think that that I, in turn, if you follow me, then you you know I always use this language of like legacy. Mm. I think my dad's ultimate legacy and purpose was to show me how to fulfill the legacy that was intended for him, mm. or how to birth out of him a legacy of of pastoral care and and, and ministry. So I, I'm the only I'm the only pastor in my family mm. that I know of. Yeah. If I trace back, you know, I'm the only one in my family. So when I told them, uh, when I had an encounter with God at 16, at 17 years old in the summertime, um, I was laying out in my hallway and um, I had already been going, you know, you, you're teenager, right? So I'm in Durham, I'm a teenager. There's a lot of stuff going on around me right. and I'm in it. I'm <laughs> thoroughly in it. Okay. I mean, I'm in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one night I just didn't feel like um, going out. I didn't feel like going out. My dad, my mom, never, my mom, my dad, for, for instance, never pressured me to be like this mighty church guy. Like I sang the choir, usher, you know, and they knew there was a call in my life because I just sang the choir and I just, like one day I felt the Holy Spirit, shout out, da, da, da. But like, he never pressured me to like, to, like conform to like, this is how you should be if you, yeah. you know. So I was still going out. I mean, going to the clubs, going to the parties, X, Y, and Z. And one night I stayed home at 11.30. My dad was like, you, you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm good. So um, again, long story short, I just knew it. I knew it because I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit man that night um, that just messed me up. I mean, to this day, I'm getting chills right now. I think about it. I'm actually welling up right now. I think about it because it changed my life. It changed the trajectory of my life. Yeah. And um, I, I went to my pastor. My pastor said, I was waiting for you to tell me. Wow. <laughs> Which, I grew up in this church. Um, so I was 17, like, I'll wait for you to tell me. So I did my initial sermon in October that year. Um, so it'll be what, it'll be what, uh, 13 years, 12, 13 wow. years this year. Um, um, that I was actually been in, in licensed ministry and just, it just propelled my life. So I, I went to college, thought I wanted to be a PR representative, actually ended up my junior year switching my major because I just want to serve people. I was like, I just want to serve people. I just want to help people. I just want to help people. So my whole major man, fast forward, became a teacher. I worked in higher education, became a teacher in the public school system, and I just served myself in the ministry, man. I've been in Zion for seven, six, seven seven years now, I just served in ministry, just young adult ministry, youth ministry. I uh, wrote a curriculum for youth ministry. I just served, 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 served. Um, and I say all of that to say this, is that um, the call on my life, I've never been able to run mm. from, because at a young age, I always felt different. I also use this language called peculiar. I've always felt peculiar. And now I preached a sermon when I first got here in the full-time ministry on the main side, and I call it the peculiar generation. Mm. And, and peculiar in a worldly sense means like different, weird, strange, mm -hmm. but peculiar in a biblical sense means a special possession of God. Mm -hmm. So I've always, like, I've always been a, a different kid. Like I hung out with you, but at the time I was like, eh, I don't want to do that. I'll do this much, but not necessarily all that. Right. Like I've always been a kid like where like people will try to push me to things, but you can never like coerce me. Mm -hmm. But I, I found that my weakest season of, of character was when I was in middle school mm -hmm. because I allowed people around me to coerce me to do things. And I was like at my weakest point academically, mentally, emotionally, like, man, I had three years of chaos. Mm -hmm. And I, I can say now I know what it is. It was demonic. Like I had three years of, of, of being out of alignment. 
that it affected my relationship at home, it affected how I dressed, it affected how I, how I thought, it affected how I, how I looked at education, it affected how I looked at life. Um, but when I got back into alignment, now not, not perfection, but got back into the wheel, got back to alignment, man, I've been, I've been at, the, I've had more places and spaces of grace when I've been in the will of God than anything else. So I'm in this seat today, physically in this seat, and spiritually in the seat that I am in is because I woke up and I realized who I am in him. Yeah. And I'm okay with the mere fact that I don't want to be quote unquote popular. I don't care necessarily have my, my, my name in lights. Yeah. Um, if that happens, cool. There'll be a byproduct of me being faithful to what he's called me to. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I am, man. I just, I just have a heart for people. So I can literally see somebody on the side of the street, man, be like, oh, let me get out. Let me, I, I, just, I just have an a, a inclination for people. Uh, and I, I, I'm a burden bearer. Yeah. So and I'm, I literally, like, I, I weep. Like I, I just wear what people, what people are going through, and that's just my, that's my, 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 my priestly and my prophetic garment mm-hmm. that I use to kind of help me in, and um, and 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 moving and ministering in my life. And I've always been that way. I didn't know it. I didn't have language to it until I became older. But even as a child, I've always felt peculiar, and I always felt like I've worn the the, the issues and the burdens of my society, my friends, my family. And I've always kind of just been more wise. So I've always been able to kind of navigate and discern certain things, even yeah. though I didn't know what it was. I call it, I just felt like, no, no, that was the Holy Spirit moving in my life and showing me how to dodge. Like, like literally, I could have been killed on several different occasions, but the Holy Spirit showed me when to leave and when not to go. Um, literally, I can tell you, if I had more time, I could tell you the instances where things could have went another way. Um, but literally, he's save me because of just of just un- subconsciously knowing that there's something in my life that was worth fighting for yeah man that is yeah. that is awesome i mean i'm definitely gonna have you back on we're gonna talk because yeah. <laughs> like Listen. we have so much in common that you don't even man you don't understand we have so much in common that is it's, i feel like this is definitely a divine connection yeah man we i'm down I'm down, man. I'm down. The reason orchestrated this thing, so you know we, yeah, we'll have you back on, man. Yeah, listen, listen, let's talk. Let's talk, brother. Let's talk. talk. We got a lot more to talk about. So, I appreciate you taking this time to to talk with me. I know you got a um, yeah, you got an appointment to um to make, but yeah, man, I just pray that God continue to bless you and flourish you, you, and that He continues to uh you know pour into more to you more of His presence and more of His Spirit, so that you can uh, you know do the things that you're doing in ministry and continue to pastor and be a great pastor and great leader. Thank you, man. Um, To serve under your pastor and under your bishop uh, and just you know continue to do an awesome job, man. I'm proud of you. You know, we Thank just kind of met right now and, and yeah. just talking and everything. But you know, I'm proud of what you what you've done. You know, you, you know, we come from Durham. Listen. Anytime I see someone that came from Durham that's doing anything successful, I'm like, bro, listen, I'm proud listen, of dog. You. <laughs> I'm like, dude, right? I ain't got listen, dog. So I, I understand. Many, you know, too many people from Durham, especially young black kids who didn't make it out listen. and who's still there and still trying to figure it out. But yeah, you know, yeah. God has favored us and God has graced us. And, you know, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm about like you. I, I care a lot about people. I love people. Yeah. I just want to yeah. help. So, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna keep going on because I'm a rambler too. I Listen. Keep going on. Well, thank you, man. I want to, I want to commend you, brother, man, for creating this platform, creating this space, man. Um, definitely, uh, the conversations need to be had on a deeper level, on a deeper yeah. sense, because people need, people are looking, people are hungry, man. Without yeah. even making mention to how what their hunger is, people are hungry yeah. um, for this information for this content uh, so man i thank you man for being who you are i just like you know honoring god you know honor god in your life man i pray a fourfold blessing over your life and your family man that whatever is birthed from out of this man that god fully shows you the harvest um, ahead of time and that not only he shows you the harvest man that people can eat thereof yeah. and that from the harvest that people eat thereof man their lives fulfilled yeah. so man whatever i can do for you brother i'm here man you know full city all day so whatever you need from me man i got you I got you, it, man. To God be the glory, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate it, man. You go ahead and, and take your wife to the appointment. Y'all be blessed and, and be favored of the Lord, man. I love yes, you. Yes, sir. Love you, man. Love you too, man. Have a good one. Hey.